name is uh, Catherine Pollard Griggs. Yes. You are the wife of Colonel George Griggs. Yes. 11 years of marriage. Yes. It's true that your husband is uh, and has been the head of special operations under Admiral Kelso, NATO. Yes. And it's true that you were the uh, head of the hospitality committee. Yes. You were the uh, member of the executive board of NATO's Wives Club. Absolutely. And uh, also that your husband's background includes uh, NATO Defense College in Rome. Yes. Princeton class of uh, 1959. Yes. His intelligence career, his spy career began in Vietnam. Yes. And uh, it's also true that it continues under this day. Absolutely, under uh, General Wilhelm. And that your uh, husband was the liaison between the White House and President Jamal of Beirut, Lebanon, at the time of the bombing of the Marine barracks in uh, Lebanon? Yes. And in fact, your husband was an alcoholic. Absolutely. And probably Credible. is to this day. Absolutely. And uh, during these drunken stupors, uh, he would, so to speak, blab on and tell you everything he knew about the everything. intelligence community. Everything. Nothing was hid. No. It was like he wanted to relieve himself and bur unburden his heart. Yes. And so he told you everything that you now know about yes. the intelligence community. Yes and that you are talking about. And in fact, he told you that they knew the bombing was coming down in yes. Beirut before it occurred. Absolutely. And right. also, he, uh, by your association with him, you have come to understand and know, uh, this, as shocking as this may sound yeah. to the people who are viewing this, that the United States military is literally run by sexual deviants heavy on the homosexual side. Tr truly. Um, and that the United, in the United States military People like Jeffrey Dahmer and Kaczynski and McVeigh yes. and Oswald and a host of other people who have a sexual deviant background, uh, primarily homosexual, these individuals are actually sought out by people within the military. The Army. For, uh, the Army for advancement yes. into intelligence type yes. work yes. because they are so easy to control. Yes. And uh, they actually become mind slaves and that the U.S. Yes. military, yes. literally, yes. As, yes. as outrageous as it sounds, is a mind control operation? Yes, totally now, totally now. They've, okay. they've gotten rid of the good folks. Now, you know, s some of the things you're talking about here, this big operation, you've come to understand about the, the largeness of it, the intricities of yeah. it, through a diary that you have. Is yeah. there, uh, yeah. could, you, could you hold that diary up so we can uh, yeah. get, a, get a look at that? And um, the thing that I found, uh, this is the actual diary. Uh, just hold it up kind of like uh, a chest tie. Okay. There you go. And uh, these are the actual handwritten notes of your husband. Absolutely. And they reveal an awful lot. In fact, the, uh, does the military or those in the intelligence community, do they realize you have a copy of this? They do now. You know. So I, I got this General Jim Joy, who is the one who was in the Operation uh, Just Cause. Was it Just Cause, the one in Panama? Mm -hmm. He was in charge okay. of all the psychological operations, the booming music that they hit Noriega with, the chasing him around, the well, The same stuff clothes. they did at Waco, too. Of course. We'll get to that oh, in a minute. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's General Jim Joy, who mm. was behind Waco. Oh, I see. And General Carl Steiner, the snake, okay. who tried to steal Desert Storm away from Schwarzkopf. What is this uh, this consistent thread of the sexual degeneracy and the homosexuality and just the raw, base nature that seems to be so prevalent? Have you ever determined what it is? I mean, why? Well, it's, it's a way to handle them, <clears throat> to control them. German existentialists. Now, what are they doing running our nation? I just, uh, it's, it's kind of, they have more affinity for the, the state of Israel right now than they do our nation. They don't care about American citizens. Um, the judges now in the courts are, are military officers following chain of command orders. They're not independent judges. So all this spills over then into the political areas like the uh, judgeships. Sure. Uh, They're all Marines. Senators, or officers, congressmen. Sure. Who is John Warner? A Marine. Who is Chuck Robb? A Marine. They control the powerful committees. Dick Davis, Lieutenant Governor of Virginia. A Marine. His wife was, I hate to say it, well everybody knows, a Norfolk a prostitute. You know, Martha was a wonderful woman, I'm sure to him, but 
they were involved in organized crime. Uh, now, I don't know, I know that our present governor in Virginia is an army officer. He takes orders. Uh, so the question that all of us wives are asking now is, well, who gives the orders? If they're told that we, the wives, are enemies, uh, how are the sons going to grow up? If the mothers who are teaching them truth mm -hmm. are lied to and the husbands are told, ordered by the likes of Al Gray, major homosexual, when he was in, in the, I shouldn't say this, but it's true, mm -hmm. when he was in, in, the, uh, in Marseille, uh, the boys are called Gray's boys. Which all of these guys, like Newt Gingrich, Bill Clinton, who've gone through the sweats, like Cohen, what, what happens is they get a little tiny thing that, to prove their power, how much power they have. They use guys like Michael Isikoff in Newsweek or their little clones. George said they, what they do is they nurture, they cultivate the, the sons of prominent families in all, the State Department finds them. Mm -hmm. They're called rising stars. Yeah. And they turn, that's the word they use, George mm -hmm. used, they turn them, they, um, they, they bring them in, they, they rope them in. What, if they're alcoholics, give them more booze than anybody. If they want women, you know, they find the women, they turn them, and, uh, and then let them know, if, you know, if they ever get in any trouble, come on over here, we'll take care of it. <clears throat> Did you come to learn how drugs actually come into the country? Yeah. Uh, I saw a, a news piece one time where a yeah. pilot who was in prison uh, alleged that they actually landed on military bases with oh. huge planes loaded oh. with dope. Th this is how they, they all brought them in, the Norwegians, the, the Brits. Um, the, the drugs, you see, they would come down through uh, Burma, Turkey, they, they'd come through the Bekaa Valley. The banks were in, in Beirut. Uh, they were in uh, Panama, Mexico, in uh, St. Thomas after, you know, the laundering of cash. You see, mm -hmm. cash, that's why some of the banks in New York, you can very easily find out who the drug lords are. Barry McCaffrey, I saw him two weeks ago, and he said something, very, he let it slip out. He's an army general, you know. He said, We're, we haven't done any more or any less in the last five years. Now. <laughs> in terms of the war on drugs? Yeah, no. They're just holding it. The word uh -huh. he used, I think, was holding it. It was a word that he, you could tell they'd used in briefings. In, uh, they were, the, war, the, the guys who were doing the drugs are military officers. In fact. Doing the drugs meaning controlling, controlling the, them. the flow. Oh, yeah. Now, not to, uh, not to diverge uh, from what we're talking about right now, but um, did your husband ever tell you anything about any disease warfare, like giving people mm -hmm. sicknesses? And, yeah, and, um, yeah, that's part of, they call it, he called it uh, ABC, NBC, it was something like nuclear, biological, chemical, um, ABC, atomic, biological, chemical, uh, they call it biologicals, uh, and in fact, his, I'm not going to mention his name because this is a guy who's really a good guy who scared the word they use is shitless, mm -hmm. excuse me, mm -hmm. but that's the word. Mm -hmm. This guy is petrified. Because? Because he's doing that work. The, the chemical? And biological work. The marine? You mean the laboratory work or the uh, implementation? Dealing. Subterfuge, deception in okay. the Middle East. Okay, and they use uh, he's a Marine Corps disease Colonel. causing drugs? Absolutely. Uh, and then how do they administrate them? With in, in missiles and in, in uh, I mean, these, this, is, this is an elaborate big business. <sighs> like Peter Kawaja, mm -hmm. Marine Corps guy, who's working in plain clothes at one of the, the plants in Florida. This is, this is why George is in Florida. This is why they're all down in Florida because all of this stuff is, is being... We manufactured the chemicals and biologicals 
that were in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't believe me, you don't believe Peter Kawaja, a Marine Corps colonel, who's, he says they killed his wife, I believe him. He worked in one of these factories that was supposedly a candy factory where they were manufacturing deadly, deadly killer things. The Marine Corps, Al Gray, Krulak, Carl Mundy, he's in the CFR. He was in Ken Millis's class, who was the chief of staff, the one who controlled me. You know, I went to his mother's house in Seven Mile, Ohio. Flo, his father was a German Nazi. I'm not saying that, you know, being a German Nazi is bad, but he's part of this group. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe Peter Kawaja about the, the drugs, you can, I mean, it's, it's just, um, it's, it's, everybody knows. There's a guy named Randy Abair, Lieutenant Colonel, hero, American patriot. This is a guy who should be the Commandant of the Marine Corps, Krulak. I'm talking to you, I'm talking to Al Gray, I'm talking to you, Carl Mundy. You all are adolescent, immature, I call you twerps. You're liars, you cheat, you steal, you kill, you're beneath the contempt of any of your wives. They are scared to death. Why do you do this to your wives, guys? Look at that tape of Randy A. Bear. I knew Chesty Puller, and this is a strong, wonderful guy. I knew his wife, Virginia Mack. I knew a real Marine. You can't say that you knew them because you didn't. I did. Randy A. Bear stood, sat. He could hardly talk. He was leading a platoon into Iraq. His wife was sitting to his left. His wonderful father was sitting to his right. And he said that his, his colonel, he's a lieutenant colonel at that time. I believe he was a lieutenant colonel. He said, my colonel ordered me. He said, our, all of our registers were saying, this is danger. There are chemicals, biologicals everywhere. I was told, and I was, you know, followed orders. And he was having a hard time talking. His wife was, this is a young guy. His wife was having to interpret for him. Mm. He was crying. He'd been turned on by you guys. He said, on those canisters, on those boxes were American. American flags. Those were American biological biologicals agents. that we were walking into that killed me, that you, Gray, and you, Scrocoff, and you, McFarlane, and you guys knew. You, Ed Wilson, best friend of my husband. You all sold to Saddam Hussein. And not only that, I talked to the man who trained the woman who was sent over from Iraq to learn how to build the biologicals and chemicals, the, 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 the plants. She was trained here in the United States, and you all know that. And Randy A. Bear's testimony says everything that I could say a million times better because this is a man who's a real man, unlike the generals, unlike the colonels. This is a real hero. Now, is Randy Evers, is he still alive? I don't know, and I hope and I pray to God that he is. Because this is the man who should take over our Marine Corps, or his wife. Some, that's why they don't have any women in special operations. Because that's why they don't have any, any African Americans. They're too honest. They're too strongly Christian. Now, the only uh, guy I know who is, um, who is involved is, is a homosexual. Who, and his buddy is, a, is an Israeli agent. Hmm. And they are lovers. They're a pair. But... Well, now, as he's the, now a colonel, and he is under the guidance of Ken Millis. Okay, now as these, these generals, over the period of years, this is consolidated. Mm -hmm. 
to where they're all part of this club. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is something that's been going on for years and years and years. Members of the firm. Okay, the so as the firm firm's. grows, mm -hmm. even as the guy, the old guys, the gray heads, get old, die off, retire, whatever, they already set in motion a system that, that culls out these young, budding, rising yes. stars, and they move their way yeah. up. Yeah. Well, then in time, it consolidates to where no one, no one. is in this unless they're in the club. Absolutely. So is it? Is your conclusion, based on what you know from your husband's revelations, reading his diaries, mm -hmm. this sort of thing, mm -hmm. is there anybody in the U.S. military, the Army and Marines, anybody in the, in the, the level of, you know, your generals and your, your colonels, and the, is there anybody who would not be in this club? There's nobody who doesn't know. In special operations, I would say, and I would, I would put money in the bank on this, not one of them is not a party to this. It's not a, once they get that bird kernel, that bird, they mm -hmm. go through an initiation <coughs> ceremony. This is not a, and my husband told me about that too. What's the, the, what's the initiation ceremony like? They get them drunk. Uh huh. Dining in, shell back. Uh, he, he told me. Oh, dining in, this is a term that they use. Oh yeah. A code yeah. word. Oh yeah. Shell yeah. back? Shell back. They, uh, what's that mean? Anal sex. But, but they get them really drunk. The, the guys who were that way do it. It's a group situation thing. And I was told by two colonels who said, you know, it's normal, Kay. This is just what we do in battle, you know. This is just good old boys? This is just what we do, Kay. They get drunk and they They have get drunk and they ejaculate. They beat each other off. You know, it's, it's awful. Now, uh, I'm not God, and I'm not going to judge them and their souls. Um, this is a well-oiled system. Uh -huh. And when you've got the commandant well-known as a cherry marine, cherry marine, cherry marine. Which means? Bottom. They're the bottom. The Navy guys are on the top. It, it, think about this, because... Walter Chrysler in Norfolk, they, each port has a hierarchy, uh -huh. wealthy at the top. Walter Chrysler and Phil Hornthal, everybody in Norfolk knows that. Where'd they meet? In the Navy. Uh, so when people suggest that the United States of America is becoming a modern-day Sodom and Gomorrah, Absolutely, without this it. This really is, is not just a broad generalization. No. That this club as it's grown over the years, and then placing and promoting the key people in every strata of life. Right. Banking. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the whole thing, not only the military is run by yeah. degenerates yeah. and top heavy with yeah. degenerates, yeah. people who are moral can't possibly move their way mm -hmm. up because no, they, they don't kill qualify. Them. They kill them, they get rid of them. But they can't be controlled. No. Uh, like Bobby Bray. Not the Bobby Bray who ran the Port Authority, but another Bobby Bray. He was very nice, but he was a known homosexual um, who worked with Weiner. But his secretary was pushed out of a window. Now, it was all hushed up. Of course, she committed suicide. Yeah, this was a young mother who had a baby who knew too much about his money laundering. I reported the, the money laundering that Book and Weiner, now this is a professor, head of international programs at Old Dominion University. Jerry Weiner, whose father was very high up in this Zionist group. Mm -hmm. Jerry Weiner was doing intelligence work in Algeria, in Morocco in particular. Uh, he organized this board that I was the secretary for. He was a very sick, mean guy. I mean, you talk about <clears throat> really. You mentioned when you get to be a bird colonel, and they have this initiation that involves all the sexual debauchery. Yeah. Now, would Drinking first. Get them good and drunk. Oh, big time drunk. Because there would be some of these who, uh, if they were sober, they wouldn't go through couldn't with it. Couldn't go through with it. Right. They'd have to be blasted. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. And now, do you suppose, I don't know, your husband maybe told you, when they go through this, this, all this stuff that they do, are there people there gathering information? Of course. Intelligence on them. Of course, the chaplains are intelligence. 
you know, in the in Nazi Germany, that you had to tell on your parents, or in the Soviet mm -hmm. Union, they they encourage you to tell on your parents. Oh. Phil Holwager, uh, the guys who go to Yale, who become chaplains, the chaplain corps, is tell all the tales on everybody. They have collections agencies. They, these Marines, are ordered to go and collect so and so at so and so. If a Marine tells truth, if he's a whistleblower, if the wife is too much trouble, they collect them, they throw them in, they fill them full of chemicals, they'll do, they'll implant little things in them. I, I believe that my husband has an implant. Well, now, McVeigh said he had a chip implant. I believe George did. Now, now ask yourself, all right, George, I know George, has a, a male had a male friend. Oh. You know, he has had male friends. Your, hus your husband is bisexual. Yes, he's bisexual. Uh, and I was told that by colonels and a captain, uh, by a a psychiatrist. Um, uh, what percentage do you think of these higher up people are bisexual? Oh, all of them. If they're if they're in special operations, if they're Marines. They're, they're all bisexuals. They've all had to do it. In order to get to be a bird colonel, mm -hmm. special opera, the SEALs, it's kind of like the fast road to the top. Uh, the, now, so a guy could not be a SEAL without having Oh, I don't, I, don't, I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't met one that I don't believe would have done it. And judging from what a couple of colonels told me, it's just, that's the norm. It's just you women, you know, y'all are so sissy, y'all are just, you know, you don't, you don't understand how it is. We're under so much pressure. And when Valerie Wilhelm told me that about Charlie, I just could not believe. What Charlie she was Wilhelm saying. would be a... He's a, he's, a, he's a general now, down in Miami. And she was just saying, oh, well, you know, he's run around. He has to, she said. He's under so much pressure. Because you, he, he would not have made it. Everybody knew he was, he was a homosexual, not a bisexual. This is a homosexual commandant. Uh -huh. I um, talked to people who actually, one woman who went to one of the parties, she was French, and she married a naval officer. And it was when George and I were first married, and I told George about what she said about General Gray. She said, you cannot believe this man is totally debauched. This man is, is, does these group sex orgies in, outside of Marseille, France. He's just horrible, you know. She said, now I have to admit, I was party girl, you know, went to these parties. And um, now this, is a, this is a big admiral. And the admiral, would, they would go to these parties at this big mansion outside of Marseille. What they did was they invited the, the wild girls, the secretaries, because this went on in, in Indonesia. My husband had a secretary. Ann Bushu's husband, Hank, was sleeping with the secretary. My husband was sleeping with the secretary and Ann Bushu. They were doing, because my husband's wife wasn't there, so they had their little menage à quatre. But the girls, the women leave at about 11 o'clock. This is what he said. I mean, I knew the girls were there because I'd already talked to, the, talked to the French girl. And he said, well, you know, <laughs> What they do is the women leave at about 11 o'clock, maybe 1 o'clock, and the guys all stay around there. And, and it's just the ritual. Mm -hmm. This is what they do. So, and the, then, I, then I found out... Um, and these are the guys that send their boys to war. Yeah. These are the, guy, the big guys. Then I found out, because my husband would mention this guy and that guy, you know, that he went to school with. Bob Edwards is involved with this stuff. But the guy who recruited him, Charles Caddock, who was a well-known homosexual, who was the, quote, head teacher but the bodyguard for the Saudi boys. See, the Saudi boys were encouraged to do this, to corrupt them. <coughs> they were corrupting Muslims who would not have done this ordinarily. Mm -hmm. The parties at Aramco, they would give the young boys get them really drunk and encourage Muslim sons to do this kind of stuff. Muslim sons who would 
have a strong tendency toward um, morality. Yes. Yes. And to abhor this kind of conduct. That's right. But if they could get them drunk and loaded enough that they would do yes. this one time, yes. then they would gain a controlling edge on these guys. And who do you think did it? Charles Caddock and Borland, these guys, Alexander Robinson, Cheeseboro, who was the headmaster. The Saudis bought Russell House at the Hun School in Princeton. They brought over Mohammed Faisal and, you know, Saud, Khalid Saud. They didn't really go to classes, mm -hmm. but whatever. And who was the young man who was partying with them? My husband, George Griggs. Who was in the group with them? Einstein. I mean, I, I, my husband was partying with Albert Einstein. I said, well, you know, I didn't. And, I just, and when would this have been? At what age in his life? 52, 53, 54, okay. 55. Um, I believe he said that Mohammed came over in 54. It was right after the murder, <coughs> the poisoning of the one who was really good. Okay. The, so your husband would have been a young guy, 18, 19 years old? Oh, he was, he was only, when they first got to him, he was in high school. So he was, he was ninth grade. And he would be there? He was at the school with these homosexuals. They sent his parents to California, got him a little Boy Scout job, his father. He didn't see his parents for eight solid years. And this is amazing. I see. So then the transference is these people become your parents. Oh, they're the of ones course. you look up to. Yeah, but they're doing things to you. Sure. Oh, they're sodomizing you. Of course. And Albert Einstein was actually... Was in that homosexual group, bisexual group. Absolutely. That's interesting. But this is, this is really, I mean, you know, I mean, what, this is full of, full of, and this is just a mild seal commando t-shirt. Can you hold it up to the camera? Yeah. That's a, that's a t-shirt that a seal would, would wear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Leave it up for a minute. This, uh, this, I uh, played Nancy Drew, Miss Marple. And uh, I infiltrated, if that's the word you could use, the SEAL reunion this year. Um, they spent a lot of money showing off, you know, jumping out of helicopters and, you know, probably $100,000 was spent. I don't know how much, but I mean, the military was providing the funds for this little game on the beach at Fort Story. Yeah. And then there was, each one of the teams has T-shirts, which all sexual, yeah, you know, all about. I mean, think about the, every the weapon. The driving motivation is sexual. Of all this stuff is is uh, go for it. Yeah. So I went to the party. I took my life in my hands. I called a couple of friends and said, if I don't, if I don't come back, I'm at the seal party, and I'm going to pretend that I'm a seal wife. And these are, this is taxpayer money, hard working people who are just wondering where the money is going to come from to, to pay their taxes. Mothers of children who are having to work two jobs to feed their three children. And they're spending $10 million on phallic-shaped weapons. I went to the Army show just, just last week. I was up there. They had a hearing on Okinawan uh, rapes a day. You know, they call it a, a murder rape a day or whatever, you know. Crime a day by Marines in, in Okinawa. And I went up there. John Conyers had a hearing. And, and they also had the Army show, which I had gone to a couple of years before. And in the basement of the, uh, this big hotel, they have these 200 or more vendors of weapons. Israel. Is, is in, has a joint venture. IAI has a joint venture with, is it TRW, TWR, that does all the uh, credit reports yeah. on Americans. Whoa. Now, they have the computers together. The Israelis stole the whole INS law system and sold it back to the Justice Department. And there were murders over that. Mike Fuller knows all. Mike Fuller was a former assassin who's talking, and they are after him. Believe me, I met him. Too.